All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Kerbo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Kerbal Foundries mod, which was originally made back in the day by forum user Lofi and Galadis, but has since been taken over and continued by forum user Shadow Mage. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is a fun new series of different landing gears, wheels, tank treads, and even anti-gravity repulsors, which are pretty freaking fun. So let's jump right on into the space plane hangar and have a look at what all this does offer us. So let's first grab ourselves a Mark II inline cockpit for a, you know, a bit of a change of pace from our usual. And then of course, turn on our mod filter. So we just have Kerbal Foundry showing. And now the vast majority of things in this mod are in ground, as you can see here. But we do have one item Item down in utility which we'll get out of the way first and that is the KF auxiliary power unit which is a fun new generator for you to use and it's a generator that is well basically an engine and as you can see here it uses a liquid fuel oxidizer and air intake to produce 18 electric charge per second it also has a battery with 300 electric charge as well as its own air intake and it's a pretty impressive little thing thing, though I am slightly confused why it uses air intake and oxidizer, but you know what? Oh well, it produces a lot of electricity, so I'm happy. Now it does so by functioning very similarly to a normal engine. We have a throttle here, which when throttled up, it will produce power. And you can either manually change the throttle here or link it to the main throttle, which is an interesting thing, but I have to admit, in my own playthroughs with this, that link to main throttle doesn't always seem to work. It seems to be a bit fidgety. Now, I don't know if that's something weird I've done or something with the mod, but it is something I do want to put out there as, you know, something to look out for. But for me personally, I just like doing the manual throttling anyways because it's just easier. Turn it on, th manually throttle it up, and you're good to go. But yes, that is the KF Auxiliary Power Unit. Now, on to the rest of the mod in the ground category and oh boy, we got a lot of things. Now the first four items are all landing gears of various sizes and styles, starting with the large landing gear here with four wheels, a medium landing gear here with a mere two wheels, a small landing gear here with just one wheel, and then another small landing gear, but whose wheel is to the side rather than straight. And what's fun about all of these different landing gears is we do have a variety of options for you to change these, including wheel angle, strut extension, all the, you know, more typical things in here. And so you have a lot of good ways to change this to whatever you do need for your particular mission. And my favorite part about them though is they're all scalable. So we can take this medium one and make it even bigger and bigger and bigger until basically it's just too big frankly or we can go the opposite route and make it as tiny as possible so you have the cutest tiny little landing gear ever and that well, that's just fun. I do like the scaling. And that is something that I should just mention right off the bat. You're going to see in all of these wheels. Every one of them has its own built-in scalability. So you can adjust them to whatever your current need is. And that is a wonderful thing. Now, after the landing gear, we have our first tank tread, which is the KF Surface Track. Very cool thing, and again, with the scalability, you can really make this thing into whatever you do need, from a small rover up to a big industrial thing, etc. And overall, it's just a nice wide base a surface track that just goes directly under your rover. So it's, uh, it's quite useful, very, very useful indeed. The next thing we have is the tiny rover wheels. 
which if I rotate it properly, there we go, has an arrow here to show you this way up. And yeah, it's a very nice, nicely designed uh, little set of rover wheels. I do enjoy them. They are pretty cool looking, nice little solid chunks of wheels, scalable as per usual to what you need, and just a very nice styling. Now the next thing we have is the anti-grav motor. Oh, I love these things. Now we actually do need to rotate this baby to, there we go little arrow there to point downward and no matter which one you're using the anti-grav motor the surface mount anti-grav motor or of course the gimbaled anti-grav motor all of them pretty much function the same in that they will you know make your ship float like a hovercraft which is awesome because i mean come on who doesn't want a floating rover? But at the same time, I gotta, I gotta admit, it's kind of hard to control if you're just using these. I find that the best way to actually use these uh, anti-grav motors is to use them purely for the floating and then use something like a more traditional engine with a nice gimbling uh, nozzle to it to actually give you your forward thrust and steering. As these things, uh, they're interesting. I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about them when we do go outside to show them off, but they are fun nonetheless. I mean, come on, who doesn't want anti-gravity things? It's just cool. We then have a couple of hydraulic legs here, which as you can see are <laughs> quite large. But remember, you got the scaling so you can make them as small as you require. And of course, got a nice animation to them, which you know me, I'm a sucker for. There we go. Beautiful. So that is the first folding hydraulic leg. We then have a second folding hydraulic leg, which is a bit more interesting, as not only does it, you know, fold into itself like so, but it also can be angled, so you can actually, you know, tilt it to the side, you know, and be angled. That's really all there is to it. But it is a fun one nonetheless, and will deploy out at that angle with the foot pad angled correctly so that it will be flat on impact with the ground, which is always good. And we then have a large hydraulic leg, which is a bit more industrial looking, and of course just folds into itself here and then in that direction. Very nice, got a good industrial look to it. I personally like using these things for uh, mining rigs because it has that industrial feel and once extended gives you a nice stable mining platform which is always fun now the next thing we have is the kf large wheel here which is well like what it says a large freaking wheel there we are beautiful just a big wheel with some nice big hydraulics all you really need for a rover and of course as with everything can be scaled to what you need. There we are, perfect. The next one is the KF Long Track. If you're looking more for a tank-like design, very, very fun track here. Got the nice back plate that attaches to the ship itself. Very fun. Uh, we then, oh, no, don't mean to grab the whole thing. There we go. The next track we have is the medium track here. Which is, you know, just a bit smaller, same back plate on the back there, and, uh, you know, a bit more taut of a track than this one, which kind of hangs down a little bit. But very nice, and nonetheless, we then have the KF Medium Wheel, which is a lot more like your sort of traditional rover wheel you'd see in... A real world rover, you know, it's got the nice hollow bit in there, the more sort of, uh... I don't even know what to call this sort of hydraulic system that it has, but it looks like what we have on real rovers that are up on, like, Mars, etc. So a very nice wheel to use. We then have the inverting track, which, oh boy, is a big thing. Another nice back plate to it, and of course a lot more internal wheels to move the track. Very nice, and of course, as you can see, a lot thicker than the other ones. We then have the RBI Mole track, which, <laughs> as you can see, by default, is, um, gigantic. And has a nice protective plate over the top, and, of course, can be scaled down to something a bit more usable than the giant thing. Though, hey, if you want the giant track, then have at it. The next one is actually, I think, my favorite of all the track uh, items that we have. It's just the RBI Tiny Track, as it functions pretty much similarly to a normal wheel. You put a couple of these around the edges of your rover, and you just 
go and have at it. Very nice thing. I do enjoy these ones. Uh, the next that we have is the screw drive, which is interesting. It's an amphibious drive, apparently, but personally, I've only ever gotten this thing to work in the water. I have never gotten this thing to successfully move on land. But it's apparently supposed to, according to the description. It says, um, blah, 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 amphibious propulsion. But yes, it actually does work very nicely in the water, though. We'll show that off here in a little bit. We then have the KF a Simple Track, a nice small little thing there with protective plates on both the inside and out. Very nice. We then have just a nice little skid if you don't actually feel like a track or boater and just want, you know, a ski. There you are. Maybe take your Kerbals to the mountains, do a little skiing. Could be fun. And then we have the KF Small Rover Wheel here. Very nice thing. I do love the look of the uh, hydraulic attachments to that thing. Very, very cool looking. Uh, probably, I think, one of the coolest looking of the wheels. Very nice. Uh, then we have the KF Small Track. A bit uh, taller of a track compared to some of the others. Very cool, though. Then the final two that we have is the Truck Wheel Dual and the Truck Wheel Single, having, of course, either one tire or two. And, yeah, perfect for your Kerbal Dune Buggies slash trucks out there. It is a fun little thing. But, yes, that is all the various wheels here, and they are awesome. So let us go and take a look at some of the designs that I have uh, thrown on to test with my new mining truck that I've been working on. And so let's start with the anti-grav repulsors, as I think they're the most interesting of all of these, and also the hardest to control. So let's actually go out to launch, and oh boy, okay. So first things first, we are freaking floating, and that is the best thing about these anti-grav repulsors. We literally are floating in the air, and that's a beautiful thing. Now you'll notice, of course, the front end of the ship is a bit heavier with the capsule, so it is tilting down a bit, but we can adjust that. If we open up any of the wheels, we can adjust the repulsor height, so it looks like about maybe 0.8-ish, roughly, to get it looking straight on. And of course, we'll have to adjust the other one over here. There we go, 0.8-ish. Well, actually, the back end's kind of tilting now, but oh well, we can do whatever we want with these. We can adjust the front or back to your heart's content. And yes, which is quite nice, you can adjust the overall height of your ride, which is cool. So you can either have a maximum height where you're floating quite high off the ground or be a bit lower, and it's just up to you. Now, the problem I have with these things, because even though it, it does function like a normal wheel, technically, as you can see, we are moving forward. Here's the problem. I pushed forward way back there when we started. I haven't touched forward since, and that is the problem that I have with these engines. They keep going forever as if they're in a world of no friction, which I mean, technically, I guess they're anti-grab that kind of maybe is, question mark? <laughs> but say, for instance, if we do want to turn, oh, I can turn, but I just tapped the key to turn. Tapped. I'm not holding it anymore, and yet we're still turning. And if I let it, it will continue to turn basically for eternity. And th that's that's the problem I have with these anti-grav motors. They, you, they take a lot of work for you to actually keep them straight and actually on the level where you want them to go. Uh, that's why I was saying earlier that, you know, it might even be better to just use these for floating and then have some normal engines doing your actual propulsion and your steering. Because these babies, oh boy, they, um, well, they, oh boy, they, they, they go slow and they go on forever. But of course, we can always turn them off, and oh no, we're crashing! Oh god! Slow death! There we go, beautiful. But yes, that's the anti-craft repulsors, and now we're forever turning in a circle because I turned off that one singular thing. Oh, and of course, they're constantly using power, so that is always a thought that you'll have to have. 
Uh, but yeah, let's uh, <laughs> revert this one to the space plane hangar and actually take a look at a more sensible ride where I have the Kerbal Foundries number two, which is using my favorite of the treads, these little RBI tiny tracks. I really like these things as they're interesting. They look cool. They're not just a normal standard wheel. They are a more tank-like tread. And I think the best part about them is they, they still work like a normal wheel, but unlike your typical Kerbal wheels in the stock game, they give you a lot more height. We actually have proper clearance now. It's one of the things that always bothered me the most about these stock wheels, is they all make your rover so low to the ground. But these, they're tracks, and they're just gonna work just like a normal engine or a normal wheel would. We can go forward, we can turn, though turning does seem to be a bit slow on them, but nonetheless, we can do so, or just go straight on and, you know, have fun, do what we have to do, and, you know, get into a lovely mining spot with this particular thing. And yeah, that is my favorite of them, the, the RBI Tiny Tracks. I, I really do like the looks of these things, and they are very functional. They are tracks, so they'll, you know, do what tracks do, and are very nice and rugged for any environment that I could try and put this little mining thing into, which is always good. But that, of course, isn't the strangest of the propulsion methods in this mod. That definitely goes uh, to the, um, the screw ones, which like I said, I've gotten them to work in water very nicely. For instance, this Kerbal Foundry is number three that we have over here, way deep in the ocean. Yeah, I kind of got carried away driving this thing earlier and I am, I am miles away from the Kerbal Space Center now. But if I go forward, there go these screw drives and we are starting to move. It's kind of hard to tell because of course we're in the water, but we are moving forward at nine, 10 meters per second. We're just kind of keep on going and we can turn and go in any direction we so desire. And it moves very nicely in the water. It's probably honestly one of the most agile water engines I've used. And we've played around with mods that were for freaking boats and submarines. And this is probably one of the best water engines I've ever played with. Uh, but the problem is the, the land. Whenever I hit land, I just stop dead in my tracks, which is annoying. But oh well, what are you gonna do? They're still perfect for water. Oh man, we are 31 kilometers away from the other rover that I had. <laughs> nice. But yeah, that is the Kerbal Foundries mod. A beautiful collection of fun new wheels, tank tracks, anti-grav repulsors, and more that you should definitely go and give a try. And if you'd like to, you can take a look at the link in the description as per usual. But yeah, that is going to be it for today's episode. I hope you all have enjoyed. And of course that you do come back for the next one when we will hopefully be looking at yet another wonderful mod but until that time thank you for watching my friends and as always have a good one